This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create these vector 3D style illuminated buttons, both in the on and the off position, using Adobe Illustrator. But before we get started, if you'd like to sharpen your logo design skills, be sure to check out my Logo Design Academy. It's an 18-part video series where I outline my entire creative process for designing logos from start to finish. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So to get us started here in Illustrator, I have a new document opened. The first thing I want to do is just make sure we are working with a similar workflow. So what I'm going to do is come up here to where it says View. Make sure we deselect Snap to Pixel. Under the View menu, make sure nothing else is selected here. If you have something like Smart Guides enabled, just go ahead and deselect that. And then once you have that set, we're going to come over here to have a window open. And the windows we want open are Control, Align, and Color. And those are these menus over here on the right hand side. So to get us started, the first thing I'm going to do is import a brushed steel texture to work as the background of the, um, the background of the buttons. It helps sell the effect a little more, make it look more photorealistic. So to do that, I'm going to go to File, Place, and I'm going to grab the texture over here and just place it onto the canvas. I will have a link in the description of the video to where you can download this brushed steel texture. So just go ahead and download that place it into Illustrator. And then over here in the Align tab, I want to make sure we have Align too. I want to set that to Align to Artboard. And I just want to center that up on the page, both horizontally and vertically like that. And now I want to make the artboard the size of this texture and get rid of this original artboard here. So to do that, I'm going to grab the Artboard tool, which is over here. And I'm going to click on the texture and it's going to create an artboard around the texture. And now I want to click on the original artboard to select that and then just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. So let's go back to the select tool now. We're ready to get started. I'm going to click off of that to deselect it. The first thing I'm going to do is create a circle in the middle of the texture here. So I'm going to click and hold over this square, over this rectangle tool right here until we get this flyout menu and I'm going to choose the ellipse tool. And to create an ellipse, I'm just going to click and drag and then hold shift and alt on the canvas, I mean on the keyboard, so that we get a perfectly round circle like that. And I'm going to center this up on the canvas horizontally and vertically. Now what I want to do is, if you notice here by default it has a white fill and a black stroke. I want to get rid of that black stroke, so let me click on that to select it. And I'm going to click this red slash right here to get rid of it. And then I'll activate the fill color again. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to give this a gradient. So I'm going to come over here to the gradient tab. If you don't have a gradient tab over here next to your color tab, you can just go to Windows and click on Gradient and you will get a gradient menu like this. And I want to click on this right here to give this a gradient. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this black stop right here and double click that to open it. And I'm going to make this white. Over here you're going to want swatches selected instead of not color or color picker. Just use swatches. I'm going to make this white. I'm going to press enter to close out of it. And where it says opacity I want to set that to 0%. And now we have a gradient where it goes from white to transparency. And what I want now is I want the gradient, I want the white side of the gradient to be at the bottom and I want the transparent side to be at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this circle around. So I'm going to bring the cursor to outside of one of these corner nodes over here. And if you notice the cursor turns into a rotation icon. And when it does that, just go ahead and click and drag counterclockwise and then hold shift to lock it onto 45 degree angles. And we want to rotate it 90 degrees as you can see here. Next to the cursor it's showing you the degrees that we've just rotated it. So we rotate, rotate it 90 degrees and then let go and there you go. Now I just want to adjust this gradient a little bit. I want to bring the transparency side a little further into the circle. So I'm going to grab the gradients tool over here and I'm going to take this node over here in the middle and just bring that in like that or bring that down like that. Now I want to grab the select tool. I want to double click the opacity right here and change that to 40 percent. So I'll hit 40. Oops, I'll hit 40 and hit enter. Okay so uh, the next step now is we're going to create another circle in here. So let me uh, grab the circles and ellipses tool, create another circle in the, in the inside here, hold shift and alt so it's a perfectly round circle. Make this one a little smaller like that. And I want to give this one a, uh, a solid fill to start out. Let me take this and center it up on the page over here, horizontally and vertically like that. And I want to hold shift and alt and scale this up a little bit so that it's just slightly smaller than the previous circle like that. That right there is what we're looking for. And now I'm going to give this a gradient as well. So I'm going to come over here to the gradient tab, click this drop down and bring it all the way back up here to where it says white black. And for this one, I'm going to double click this stop right here. I'm going to make this 
the second shade in from black right here. Click on that. And then I'll double click this one and I'll make this one the third shade in from black like that. Now press enter to close out of that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate this counterclockwise as well. So come back over here to get the rotation handle. Rotate it around, hold shift, and we're going to rotate this one 90 degrees like that. And what we have right here is we have the lighter side on top and the darker side on the bottom. Actually, we want the opposite of that. Let me rotate that some more. So let me rotate that around some more like that. And there we go. We have the darker side on top and the lighter side on the bottom. So what I want to do now is I want to create a duplicate of this circle and paste it in place. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit Control C on the keyboard and that's going to copy it. And then I'm going to press Control Shift and V and that's going to paste another copy of it right where it is at the moment. And now what I could do is I could take this and scale this in, hold Shift and Alt to lock the proportions like that. Make that a little smaller. And I want to rotate this around so that now the dark side of the gradient is on the bottom and the lighter side is on the top. So let me grab the rotation handle up here, rotate this around 90 degrees like that. And that's what we're looking for right there. Okay, so once again, I'm going to repeat this step. I'm actually going to take this bigger circle over here that we just created and I'm going to copy that, control C, and then paste it in place, control shift and V. Hold Shift and Alt to scale that in to make it smaller like that. I want to bring this one out to about here. And if you look at how this is starting to take shape right now, this right here, these two circles in the front, this is representing the button. And this is kind of representing like a bevel. So what I want to do now is I want to create a little bit of um, reflective light coming off the top here. To do that, I'm just going to take a duplicate of this white gradient that we created previously. You'll probably have to zoom in on that to get a... Uh, to be able to grab that. So let me hold Alt and roll up the mouse wheel a few times to zoom in. I want to click that white circle right there. Control C and Control Shift and V to paste it. And then hold Shift and Alt and scale that in like that. We want this to be slightly bigger than the circle we just made, that smaller circle in the middle there. And we want to lower that beneath that circle. So to lower it, I'm going to hold Control and I'm going to press the left bracket key and that's going to lower it one position beneath the smaller circle. And that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to rotate this around now so that the light, the white side is on top and the transparent side is on the bottom. So come back up here to the rotation handle, hold shift and rotate it around like that. There we go. And I want to make this one a little more transparent. I don't want to leave this at 40. I want to make this something like 20. So I'll change that to 20 and hit enter. And that's looking pretty good. So let me zoom out a little bit and see how this is looking. If you deselect everything, you can notice we have a button here. I want to add some depth to this now. So I'm going to add a drop shadow going beneath the button over here. And this is where, where I'm going to start using color to show the illumination of the button as it's turned on. So to do that, let's take this button over here in the middle. Control C to copy it. Control Shift and V to paste it in place. And I'm going to make this one a colored, I'm going to give this one a colored gradient. So let me double click this. And I'm going to choose this shade of green over here for the darker stop. And over here, I'm going to choose a shade of yellow. You can use whatever colors you'd like. I went with the green and greenish yellow gradient for this tutorial. Press enter to finalize that. I'm going to hold shift and alt. I'm going to scale this up. Hold shift and alt just to scale it up slightly bigger than what it is right now. And then I want to lower this down beneath the button. So I'm going to have to hold control and press the left bracket key a few times to do that. There we go, that's where I want it. It looks like this got off center somehow, so let me just center that back up on the page. I'm actually gonna make this a little bigger. And now I wanna give this a blur. So I'll come over here to where it says Effect and go to Blur and choose Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to give this a slightly bigger, or maybe not. Right about there, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and click OK. And that's looking pretty good. That's, what I'm, that's the effect I'm going for right there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some text or you could put whatever you want in the center here. This is going to be like a, um, like a label for the button. I'm just going to use some text here. I'm going to grab the text tool, click on the canvas to get some text, and I'm going to choose a different font. I'm going to use Orbitron for this. You can use whatever font you'd like. It doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to use RTX. RTX on for those of you who are familiar with the, uh, the latest graphics cards from NVIDIA. That's what this is a play on. Let me uh, make this a little bigger. Hold Shift and Alt to scale that up. I'm going to center this up on the page over here, like that. Make this a little bigger. Again, holding Shift and Alt to lock the proportions. And I want to convert this to outline. So we'll come over here to where it says Type and go to Create Outlines. And then go to uh, Object. 
compound path, and make. And I want to give this the same gradient we just used for this circle back here. And I just want to reposition this gradient. So let me come over here to the gradient tool. I want to take the radiant handle and slide this around like this. Hold shift to lock it onto the axis like that. And I'm just going to position this over here like that. Maybe bring this down a little bit. Bring this one down. And that's what I'm going for right there. So let me zoom out a little bit. Click off it to deselect everything. We have the on button created. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the off button, which to do that, we're just going to duplicate this whole thing and change this to black where we have the green and yellow color. So let me click and drag over the buttons right there, over all of the button objects. Hold shift to deselect the texture. And I'm just going to bring this over to the right. Hold shift to lock it onto the vertical axis. Bring that over to the right and then click and drag it again, but hold shift and alt. And while holding shift and alt, it's going to create another copy and it's going to allow you to place it over here like that. So let me click off of that to deselect everything. Let me zoom in. Again, to zoom, I'm just holding Alt and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. Uh, I'm going to take this text. I'm going to give this a solid fill color, and I'm going to make this black. But I'm going to bring the opacity of it down a lot, something like that. And then I'm going to take this circle over here, this green and yellow circle that we created, and I'm going to do the same thing. Give that a solid fill color, make that black. You may want to make this one a little bit bigger so that you can see it better. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now if you zoom out, you can see we are finished. We have created our two um, illuminated 3D style vector buttons with Illustrator. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end the video, I'd just like to let you know that you can watch all future tutorials without ads and before I upload them to YouTube at logosbynick.com. Just click the red bell at the bottom of the page to get notifications and every time a new tutorial is posted, you'll get to watch it before it gets uploaded to YouTube and without any advertisements. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and as always, thanks for watching.